What's going on guys? I'm Icy Rhythms and this is my review for Doom Eternal. The year is 2020 and there's this crazy thing out there keeping a lot of us in our homes and doing very little outside of working our jobs. March comes along and is like, it's okay. I got you, pimp. Look at all these games I have for you, especially Doom Eternal. I'm not going to do a deep dive into the you know, entire technical side of a game like this. There are already several videos on YouTube for that very thing, but I shouldn't be surprised. And I always thought it looked pretty good in the trailers and the previews, but Doom Eternal looks like one of the first next generation games. Whatever that looks like, this is one of those games. There's a handful of others. Doom Eternal is definitely in that conversation. Id Tech 7 is a straight up beast. No other shooter has this level of detail in the environments while keeping this level of performance. And just like with Doom 2016, I have to include the consoles here because just again, this level of detail, this level of performance, I haven't seen it before in a console game where you can have all of that and still maintain 60 FPS or at least close to it in a game that I feel looks next generation at times. Doom guy has never looked better, more detailed. I mean, again, I, I think, you know, Doom 2016 still looks amazing, but Eternal is just on another level. I think for me, it's many things that are the cause of that. The technical side does play a huge part, but the game gives you, you know, a crazy amount of options to tweak if you're playing the PC version to maintain the best performance possible and that's important you know Vulcan is you know time and time again this thing has proved itself I mean I, I don't want to say that you know DirectX 12 is a complete wash but a lot of the games that have Vulcan you know just they're so much better they perform better and that's just the reality Doom Eternal is no different it's so efficient this engine I, I seen where Digital Foundry dropped the resolution to like 720 and maybe even lower than that and we're getting like 300 to 500 frames a second. It's so damn efficient. It's been efficient, but id Tech 7 just again takes things to another level. And I think another thing for me too, it's it's not just again the technical side or you know how detailed Doom Guy or the environments look and things like that, but it's, it's color. Like, color is a really big thing here. Color and the pop that it creates in all of these new environments is insane. Doom has always had that dark feel or that gritty look to it. And, and Eternal is no different, I think, for the most part. But far more color. Far more colors here than some of the other games in the series. From just a pure technical or visual standpoint, you know, Doom Eternal is another one of those games that oozes brilliance. Id Software have stroked themselves in front of everyone, and nobody is bothered by it because the result is nothing short of incredible. Doom Eternal's gameplay is one of the most over-the-top pieces of fun I've ever experienced in gaming. It could definitely be a prisoner of the moment thing. You know, I think a lot of gamers, we, we do have that problem when we first play a game that's really, really good or we think is really, really good. But I think this game just squeezed itself into my top 10 all-time and possibly even my top 5. Certainly for first-person shooters, but just games in general, I, I think it just squeezed itself into my top 10. And that's saying a lot for me because, again, I enjoyed Doom 2016 immensely. There's a lot of different play styles that you can have going on at once here or just one specific play style, just a, a way to attack an area or a situation. After about 10 encounters, I started taking almost like a visual image in my head of the first 10 to 15 enemies and saying, okay, this is what I want to do. 
and this is who I want to attack first, and just trying to formulate that plan for those enemies. It's about prioritizing what you find to be the most important. So it could be, you know, the most tough enemies, the ones that can take the most damage, get them out of the way first for some of you, depending on your play style, or the fodder type of enemies, get those guys out of the way first. You know, depending on how you play, it, obviously it's going to differ from what you're seeing on your screen from me. There's no wrong way to play this. I, I can't say for me personally, in my opinion, there's a wrong way to play any Doom games. There's probably more effective ways to play Doom games, but if you're not looking to master them or anything, don't pay attention to any of the, you know, born in 3D gamers that love their cutscenes in my story and don't prioritize gameplay, especially in a game like Doom 2016, Doom Eternal, over everything else. If they're not prioritizing the gameplay, don't listen to those people. Doom is much, much more than shoot enemy until the glory kill becomes available. If you're playing on, you know, easy or very easy in a game like this or something, yeah. I guess it might be shoot enemy once or twice and wait for them to turn orange, glory kill, rinse and repeat. I don't play my games on anything less than normal or hard, so strategies in games like this differ. I'm confident that my skills, if we can call them that, improved greatly during this playthrough that I could afford to bump up the difficulty another notch, maybe two, and possibly even beyond that. I'm not sure. I, I felt really comfortable three quarters of the way through and I, I could have bumped the difficulty up. I, I felt like at one point I was being a, a lot less challenged than the first half of the game. No doubt about that. Id Software did something special here. Every encounter, every situation feels rewarding, at least for me. And maybe because that's just me, even the early game feels really, really good. Almost every encounter in the game teaches you something new or introduces a new enemy to learn. I don't feel any time was wasted here and they crunched the shit out of this game to perfection. What isn't there to love here? I mean, listen, I love stuff like Killing Floor 2. A lot, a lot. I really do. But there's no denying as far as first person shooter games go, this game sets a new bar for gore systems gameplay the works and as far as gore systems go i think at this point it's only rivaled by the last game i reviewed resident evil 2 remake but that's not a first person shooter and i love gore in games so if i say i feel like it's only rivaled by the resident evil stuff at this point that's probably the highest praise i can give it i love this gameplay loop it's one of the most simple yet effective in the industry a tried and true formula that for me will never get old. Let's talk weapons. We should get it out of the way. The pistol from 2016 is gone and that thing sucked anyway. One of the biggest changes to the weapons, the mechanics, the overall weapon switching, the gameplay in general is that id Software is forcing us to use the majority of, if not all of the awesome weapons they've created. I'll be honest, I'm not really a fan of them all. I don't like all of the weapons. I did use them all. Sometimes every single one in a fight, I would use them all just based on the fact that I was running out of ammo with some of my favorite guns. But I did use them all, even though I didn't enjoy them. But I can understand why a developer would spend a lot of time developing each weapon, all of that work, and why they would want you to at least try them a lot more often. The combat shotgun is the very first weapon in the game and it's one of the best in the game so it won't take long before you're familiar with this weapon as with a lot of the other guns it has two functions full auto and sticky bombs outside of just you know normal firing both look super cool and they're beyond helpful depending on the play style and your situation the second gun that the game will give you is the heavy cannon and they deserve a lot of praise here not just with the heavy cannon it's one of my favorites for you know just overall sound work and sound engineering it sounds really really good but they deserve a lot of praise because this isn't normally a weapon that I would like to use in a game like this but I think arguably it's one of the most important in the game. I know everyone will scream super shotgun and it is awesome but the heavy cannon's precision bolt function is great for popping heads. Some of those heads will drop helpful items that you'll want during your super fast battles. 
Speaking of super fast, sometimes this game, it's just, it's so crazy. There's so much going on. There isn't time to think. You're, you're trying to think. You're At times, you're thinking very quickly. Other times, you're jumping around and you're trying to keep all of your health while deciding what to do next because there's so much happening. You're just like, I don't know what I want to do next. That's, you know, again, early game, maybe up to the halfway point or so. Eventually, you'll figure it out and exactly how you want to attack every situation. So the one-ups in the game, they're cool, right? If you can find them, a lot of them are hidden pretty well. I don't, I think they're cool, but I don't like relying on them too much because it feels to me like a crutch. You know, I'd almost be willing to bet money that there's already people working on no hit runs, no death runs, and they're completing them in just a couple of hours or less. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not much for speedrunning or watching speedrunners, but this game is so chaotic and so intense that watching someone completely master the game and its mechanics could at least be somewhat fun for someone like me that doesn't normally watch gameplay like that. And that's another thing. You may not master the mechanics right away. I don't think anyone is going to be good enough to master this game the very first one or two times they play it. You may not learn how to dispose of all the enemy types faster than everyone else right away, and that's okay. But you will learn, and id Software deserves praise for that. You're playing a game like this because you really enjoy the campaign. You're learning. You're constantly learning. I can jump into just about any situation at this point and win because I take that visual image I taught myself and just use it to my advantage the best that I can. But you know what's in the way? You know what's a huge pain in the ass in this game? The buffs and the marauders. There are items in a lot of the fights that give these enemies buffs and you're going to want to find those and destroy them as quickly as possible because those enemies are going to get a huge buff. Arch Files can also help enemies and they take a serious, just a, a complete ridiculous amount of damage. So be ready to become super annoyed with those guys. And then we have Marauders. Holy shit, these guys are super super annoying. I don't think they're as challenging or, you know, uh, difficult, however you want to put it, as a lot of other people are claiming. Certainly not Dark Souls level of frustration here, but a challenge nonetheless. It's about being patient and waiting for that perfect opportunity. You dodge his attacks where necessary and the opportunity to take your shots will present itself, I promise. The Marauder can change the whole area with his presence. Everything you thought you had a good plan for can change on a dime. The moment he appears, you know, it's all is not lost. All is not lost, at least not in my opinion. Keep in mind what I said about patience, but prioritize the weaker enemies first. I, I do feel, while they're not as difficult as everyone else is making them out to be, they do screw the flow of the game up quite a bit. In my opinion, I don't think they should be there. I, I do feel, I don't know if it would be a massively, you know, uh, a, a huge difference, a much, much better game without them, but they are screwing the flow up just a little bit. So Marauders suck. I, I wish they weren't there, but they also look really cool. So that's a plus. Another thing that I found annoying, and this is probably my fault, is the power-ups. Not the power-ups themselves or their abilities, but their location in an arena. It always seemed like I nearly finished or had finished with all of the enemies, and then I found these damn things. And you think to yourself, you know how helpful that would have been like two and a half, three minutes ago, or it would have saved me a death or two? I mean, I mean again, it's probably my fault. Yeah, you know, this is Doom, and there's a lot more jumping and platforming here than a lot of other games in the genre. I was pretty concerned that this would somehow ruin the experience for me, but I feel like it actually made it a lot better. It helps to divide up the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay so it doesn't always feel like shooty McShooterkins. Hey, I mean, if you want to slow me down a little bit by throwing some platforming in there and allowing me to have control over some of what I'm doing is better than giving me a million and one cutscenes. Then you have your ship for Doom Guy, or I think as they refer to it, the Fortress 
of Solitude. This is where you'll gain access to a new weapon or two, unlock new and helpful items for upgrades, play old school Doom and Quake music. Those are some of the secrets in the game. And there's even an arena to practice in, so that's pretty damn awesome. Some people feel like Doom Eternal feels a little off at times with some of the decisions made with level design or things in the environment, but I think they've done a really great job here. It may not always seem like, hey, something about this level seems off. This doesn't really fit everything else that's happening, but they're all so varied and look so much more awesome than Doom 2016 in my opinion. Not to say that Doom 2016 is bad or anything because I still feel like I could go back and enjoy that game a lot. It's, it's not bad, it's awesome. I loved Doom Eternal. Everything about the gameplay just shows me that id has never worked harder to make such an awesome game. And I love the original games and they were great at the time and many things about them are great now. So it's hard for me to tell you that the gameplay here is much better than those because everyone has a preference but it's certainly more entertaining to watch unfold as you're jumping around and thinking of your next move and just ripping and tearing Why are you here? story What's a story? In a Doom game, there is a story here, more than some of the other games, but it's very much Doom Guy versus everything corrupt and evil. There are several different alien civilizations involved here, Earth and humans as we know them are present, but a lot of this story seems to give us an idea of where Doom Guy came from, what are the origins, and I think Eternal gives probably one of the better explanations of that as you guys know with a lot of my other content a lot of my other reviews i try not to spoil too too much especially in the way of story but with doom games there really isn't much to spoil anyway but it is the best that id software has done and probably the best explanation they've given as to why some of this crazy shit is happening so it is really good from a, a Doom standpoint, but it's certainly not the reason you're going to keep playing this game. I don't think I can gush about this game enough. This game is amazing in every possible way. The gameplay is arguably the best it's ever been and certainly some of the best in the genre, if not the best. The graphics, the technical achievement for this and id, you know, their engine, no other engine or game comes close to being this efficient, except for maybe Capcom's RE engine. Both are truly amazing. Praise the shit out of game developers like id Software for this kind of game, because from the AAA space, you know, just something that focuses more on gameplay than just about everything else, there's, there's not a lot that are this good. Certainly games that have a lot more gameplay than everything else and focus more on gameplay but just the the perfection that this game is in, in my opinion yes it's a 10 they've completely recovered from the disaster that is rage we don't need to talk about that john carmack did apologize at quakecon for that but the damage is already done for guys like me that gave you 60 dollars for that piece of trash game thankfully Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal are nothing like Rage outside of the fact that they're in the same genre. I think they've really outdone themselves with Doom Eternal and I'd like to see them do one more before moving on to a new IP or something because with this engine, you know, they owe it to themselves to create something even more special than they have with Doom. But I'd like to see them do a new IP and they could do it before the next Doom or do another doom and then the new ip but i don't want them to risk damaging the ip and outsourcing it to someone just to keep doom relevant and in the minds of gamers it's part of the reason i'm afraid to play games like shadow of the tomb raider for example doom eternal is the best new game that i've played in 2020 and i can't see that changing until i get around to playing something like cyberpunk or something in the backlog that's a little bit older it's worth full price and anyone that likes first person shooters owes it you owe it to yourself to play this game thank you guys for watching my review for doom eternal 
I hope you liked it. Um, this this game is amazing, and you should play it. It's uh, I feel from a gameplay standpoint, it's the swan song for this generation, and it's it's everything that makes gaming special. You guys have a good one. Take care. Thanks again. Peace.